you had four touchdowns, but only 25 yards <laughs> receiving. If that isn't the most selfish stat I've ever seen in my life, let me do zero work and just show up and get all the glory. Time out. Time out, man. Welcome back to New Heights, baby. A Jukes original show presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. Uh, this is a show where... It's a, sh- it's a show where one of us r- completely ruins your fantasy league. <laughs> <laughs> or helps it. Or helps it. Don't don't forget about the, the teams that I definitely helped. The ones that were down 30 points and just had an r- unbelievable Monday night. Yeah, you single-handedly... Like the anybody who was playing fantasy and was playing against you that day, I can't imagine what it was like watching that game happen. <laughs> Seriously, needless to say, <laughs> four touchdowns was coming. Not me. <laughs> I saw it in the game plan, baby. We are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason Kelsey, both out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio, Cincinnati Bearcat graduates. New Heights is coming to you every single Wednesday with a new episode. Subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms at New Heights Show. All right. Coming up on this episode, we got a great episode. I don't know if you know that, Trev. We got a great episode. We always have a great episode. Well, this one's going to be special. I think uh, one of us uh, broke an NFL record. Well, uh, a Travis Kelsey record. Uh, Well, no, an NFL record. We'll get into that. We're going to break down both of our week five nail biters, look at some uh, coaching changes around the league, and uh, we'll see if we've made uh, the quarterback sneak too powerful. Not so much a sneak anymore. Yeah, Not, not just, very sneaky. It's just the quarterback shove. <laughs> the quarterback plow. It's no more him sneaking. It's everyone just yeah. pushing well, him forward. It's that time again for new news. New news. New news. Well, actually, old news. We are still the number one sports podcast in the world. Yeah! That's right. Especially on Spotify. I think it actually might only be on Spotify, but we're calling it the world. Can't touch us right now. We are on fire. One episode a week. You guys are really tuning in. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. We appreciate it so much. It's been so much fun, man. Well, officially, I think uh, two weeks in a row, I guess that makes us podcast pros. Another shout out. Shout out. Hey, yo. Who did we get one podcast, from? Podcast got another shout out uh, during the Eagles-Cardinals games. Uh, Robert Smith and Chris Myers in the booth with this quote. Imagine that household in Cleveland Heights with Travis and Jason. They must have torn that place up. <laughs> Boy, is that accurate. The old Kelsey complex. We've already touched on the uh, hole in the floor from uh, a power bomb. Uh, yeah. What else do we tear up? We tore up the multiple garage doors had to be uh, no, 100%. Yeah. 100%. And, uh, windows galore. The garage uh, the garages were like the backstop for every single sport right. that we played. It was also right. like well, the goal at times whenever we were playing like hockey. I remember using it as a uh <laughs> uh just hitting the tennis ball off of the garage <laughs> like I was Andre Agassi or something. Yeah, or we're like practicing pitching and full on <laughs> just going straight into the side of it. Yeah. It was dimpled more than a, a Pro V1. You know what I mean? That thing had some holes in it. All right. Now. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, it, the house somehow made it through uh, the rough. We pounding. actually one of the one of the game changers was mom and dad went out and got storm windows for the basement because of ice block how much, windows. Ice block windows. Yeah, That's you can't right. break those. You can't no, break hard. those. Yeah, <laughs> probably probably is a way, but we never found a way I had to break those. <laughs> we also moved the mini sticks down into the basement. When Dad made the mini stick arena, he was like, "Okay, you guys are done playing this On sport cement. upstairs where balls are just flying everywhere. We're going to create an arena with plywood walls mm-hmm. and a carpet on cement floor." Oh, that was how couldn't we... do it now. Could not no. do that now. Could you imagine that? But on that... your knees playing miniature hockey, <laughs> slamming people into plywood on concrete. I remember getting splinters from that from the wood. Yeah. Well, yeah, so. Splinters and, yeah. uh, and raspberries on the knees, man. It's a great house. Miss every second of that. Well, So much fun. 
But yeah, we right. did. We tore it down, and then Dad finally put it back together and sold it to a beautiful family. It looks great. I actually rode past it last time I was in Cleveland, and it looks yeah, fantastic. I, so I, I actually walked through it with the. We the didn't. We didn't owners. burn it down. <laughs> yeah, and the people that took it over did a really good job. So, uh, kudos to them for uh, not tearing it apart like we did. <laughs> All right, we got some fan comments. Quick question here from Brandon Miller. What's the chatter like between opposing players throughout the game? Is it friendly competition or all out trash talk? I realize it's probably different from week to week, but overall, I'm curious. Man. You want to touch on it? I, I feel mean, like it's, it changes player to player. You already know. I think a lot of the bigger games, like if it's um, like this past week against the Raiders, huge rivalry, divisional opponent guys are going to be yapping. You know what I mean? It's personal, you know. Yep. Um I think a lot of the cross conference games are more of just like respect and keep it moving unless you have like some sort of um history with like a guy across the ball from you. You know what I mean? But for the most part, I'm not talking smack until I hear somebody else yapping at me and then I'm going to go ahead right. and let them know I'm here. Yeah, I think I think you hit the nail. I think a lot of it depends on uh, the week you're playing, and it's it's kind of different from player to player, team to team, how the game's going. If it's a physical game, and I'm usually a oh my gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh no, a retroactive trash talker. Meaning, if you're talking, I'm I'm kind of just going by doing my business. But if you if you're gonna trash talk me, we're gonna do this. <laughs> and I I think I should talk more trash because it makes me angry. And nine times out of ten, I play. Like way better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, like I use that anger, and it becomes a very productive type of anger. So maybe I should do some more of that. Um, yeah. I'm not gonna what? lie. If I if I see a guy talking shit to me, and I don't even know who the fuck he is, that fuck that gets me fucking going more than anything. Right? Yeah, especially yeah. if especially if it makes a good player like shuts me down on a play or does something and make you know even if it's a good bad. player, even if it's a good player, I can't listen. And I, I'm, the problem is I'm not creative with it. I go to your your basic four letter words that everybody knows. Like it, I'm not getting creative. You. The, whoa, easy. This is a family show. Hey, we we uh. I also go to uh, calling guys bums. I don't know why. That's like a big. I, I think bum. Get out of here, you bum. Like that's a. I, I like that. I feel like it's an underrated term. Uh, that's a solid one. The uh, what position groups uh, talk the most trash? To me, I think it's without question DBs. 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 100%. Why do you think that is? Why are DBs the biggest trash talkers? Is um, it because their job is so hard? Uh, you think they have a, the hardest job? DBs? Yeah. Are you is that you you don't think a DB is the hardest job in the NFL? What's a harder job? Maybe quarterback. Qu- Maybe yeah, you can I give mean, me quarterback. I'll oh. say quarterback. I'll say center if you're like a 260 pound center. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dude, you got to mirror somebody throughout the whole field. Like you're playing cover one. Is it what's harder than playing cover one and just staying in somebody's hip and you can't give up a yard of separation? Otherwise, it's a completion. I, I never just thought it was that hard. Yeah, no reacting. Yeah, no, you I never thought you. it was that hard. The when good ones. DB? The good ones. The good when I when I was in high school. Listen, if <laughs> it's on so freshman, good, it's so good that white people can't even do it, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how you know it's the hardest position. They don't even let white guys try to play quarterback anymore. <laughs> like they just said, you're done. It's too hard of a position. Nah. It's too physically demanding. Can't even. That's do it. funny as hell. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. That Jason point alone, Seahorn. it is. It is probably. Yeah, he's the last of he's dying like, I breed, mean, man. I think there was another guy that played like a year or two ago, but that's how you know that shit's hard. If we, if we all don't know him, it doesn't count. Uh, yeah, it's a good point. He wasn't Jason Seahorn. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I feel you on that. That's funny as fuck. If I see a white corner out there, I am attacking him immediately. <laughs> fish. The fish is over there. <laughs> hey. We're going to see if this guy. He's I haven't standing, seen this. He's standing out like a highlighter years. over there. I haven't seen this in 20 years. We're going to find out if this can work still. <laughs> um, oh, right, man. We, right, That's a good bit a right bit. there. I, I hope. Woo. I don't know. Now, moving on to the 12 bold topics to wrap up week five in the NFL. Um, starting off with our, both of our games. Um, 
this is how we do it. I tee up questions about or topics about Jason's game. He does the same for my game. Um, and Jason, go ahead and jump us off, man. Well, I think uh, the first topic has got to be uh, what happened last night or on Monday night. I guess this airs Wednesday. Big Monday night performance. Let's go. The Kansas City Chiefs, uh, 30 to 29. Um, it was not the prettiest start, but you guys no. found a way to get it done. 17 nothing is a very uncomfortable situation to be in. Um, what and that's, uh, where we, that's where we were early on, but. What do, you, do you have anything to say initially about the game? I mean, obviously, uh, we're still growing as a team, finding out who's uh, how how we mold together, how we how we uh, keep growing throughout the season, throughout the uh, the games, and um, being put in adverse situations of finding a way to come out of it and have success and and win a win a football game, um, even if it's not pretty. You know that builds that builds so much in the in terms of being in the locker room and um, just the confidence and the chemistry that you have with the guys around you. I couldn't be happier with how we all handled that entire game. Uh, yeah. Once we Obviously, once we, uh, we started slow and everything, or once we got the ball rolling and everything on offense, our defense uh, played their tails off um, against a very good offense and uh, really just an all-around good team for the Raiders, man. We knew it was going to be a dogfight. We know those guys. Um, it's, it's, it's one of the most uh, – legendary rivalries in in football and and i've been fortunate enough to play it uh year in year out and feel how the fans get excited for it how the how the how the organizations get excited for it um and i just love playing in it man I, it's a dog fight every single time um guys are yapping everybody's playing their tail off everybody's playing physical football i mean it's uh if at the end of at the end of every single Raiders game, man, I'm I'm feeling it a little bit more uh, on the on the ride home. So it's uh, that was a fun one, man. And obviously, you know, four touchdowns, but uh, so much so much to be said about how we got to the red zone. You know, it was a it was yeah. it was a showcase of everybody getting a piece of the pie. Um, all of our wide receivers, all of our running backs going downhill, um, and then Pat just finding ways to to you know get the ball in the end zone. To me, and so it was. Uh, it was just an all-around fun game, man. Fun game and a uh, competitive game. Yeah, seventeen zero was uh, what well, you guys found yourself down uh, up into the second quarter. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, the the atmosphere was very low watching it. It was on a TV. little it eerie. Looked, it was a little eerie. Yeah, yeah, it looked like you guys had been surprised, shocked, um, and uh, they caught. You, they, I mean, kudos to them. They started off really, really hot, um, and then. Uh, you guys are down seventeen, nothing. Pat gets sacked. Juju drops a ball, uh, and then you guys come up with a big down, third down conversion. A missed field goal, yeah, missed field goal, no, down, no. huge third down. No, no, no. This is that next. This is the series that you guys scored your first touchdown. Oh, okay. You guys, you started off that series. It wasn't looking good again, and uh, all of a sudden, Jarek McKinnon busts out an enormous run, Jet. twenty yards. And it looked like you guys, that's all you guys needed. You needed just that little spark. We've talked about that before, like body language. Mm -hmm. Momentum isn't a real thing. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you guys got a nice little juice, a little bolt right there. And uh, the rest of that drive was awesome. You guys really finished it off strong. And then immediately following that drive, you have the roughing the passer call against uh, Chris Jones. Bananas. Not, uh, yeah, not the best. Uh one I've seen. Unbelievable, and, um, man. I don't know how you can get it, a rough in the passer when you have the ball, but it's crazy. I don't know, man. but I know that after that call, um, that stadium was electric. Gosh. I mean, I would have hate to be one of those officials. They were I could live in that moment, man. Yeah. yeah. When the, you when could the hear, arrowhead is rocking like that and we're putting up yeah. points and, and you know what I mean, the energy and the momentum is all on our side, man. That is that's one of the best feelings that you could ever have as a, as a, as a football player, man, when you know, you got the entire place just rocking and you're yeah. just making play after play after play. And the other team just feels like they can't do much about it. Um, man, I love that feeling, man. And Arrowhead was shaken. I'll tell you what even gets me, it gets me more fired up is when you see big red screaming on the sideline. Oh yeah. Telling the, telling the ref, come here. That's right. You, you don't see, cause Andy doesn't get like that often. No, he you doesn't. don't see that, especially with officials. No. So when he's doing that, you know it's something big. Yeah, and, and for um, the most part, he doesn't want to rip them, you know, 
He doesn't want to scream at him and yell. He no. just wants to. He wants to hear why play. you called it. Yeah. Why? Yeah, they, they, explain it. yourself, son. Yeah. Explain yourself. And it, seeing him getting fired up on the sideline, that just. Man, that's just it, it. What it does is just amps everybody's attention, uh, just awareness, just the want and the will. And and I honestly think, man, that uh, that whole scene of events that you just named right there, that that really got us playing with more energy, playing with more intention. Um, yeah. And from there, it was uh, it was a great game. It was a great game because the the Oakland didn't fold, man. They they fought their tails off too. Oakland, Vegas didn't fold, man. They fought their tails off too. But it felt like the moment after uh, that first touchdown drive with the Jarek McKinnon run and then the the Chris Jones roughing call, uh, I felt like after that you guys needed this. That was the spark you guys needed, and uh, you definitely saw it on offense. You guys were uh, back to the same Kansas City offense functioning, and oh, yeah. uh, Patrick Mahomes again dialed in, making unbelievable throws. So, um, you well, know. would you get a running back running downhill, aggressive? Uh, Jacobs for the for the Raiders was doing that last night in the first half, and I mean it is it is not only you know I don't want to say demoralizing, but it it takes a blow on everybody when you see a guy out there running his tail off like that. Um, yeah. So you're talking about when Jet uh, had that big run. I mean he had multiple big big time plays yeah, for there us was one in the backfield. On the 20, yeah. yeah, that he. Uh, when you get that 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 momentum is infectious, man. You see a guy just running his tail off. Man, it's or just playing his tail off, you know what I mean? It's just uh it's infectious, man. It makes you wanna wanna match that energy and play a little bit harder. Well, we gotta talk about the elephant in the room. Uh you scored four touchdowns. I don't know if you remember. Did that was you crazy, recall? man. I uh I remember I remember the third one. All the other ones I kinda was like dang, I ended up in the end zone. That's crazy. That must be the, nice. Score so third many one, touchdowns the third you don't one. even remember them. I right now, no, I remember them all. But uh, during the game, I was like, "Man, I really do have three touchdowns right now." Going into the fourth, the uh, the drive for the uh, the fourth touchdown. But like I was saying, I mean, the four touchdowns are cool and all, but it was how we got to the red zone that uh, that I got really excited about, man. Yeah, you you had four touchdowns, but only twenty five yards <laughs> receiving. If that isn't the most selfish stat I've ever seen in my life, let me do zero work. And just show up and get all the glory. I'm gonna go dance in the time end out, zone. Time out, man. What? Time out. I wasn't. I didn't dance one fucking time because That's I was true. dog shit dance. tired. That's they true. were all ten, I made eleven, up. twelve play drives where I was getting double teamed, bracketed by by two DBs as well as them putting. I know I, Chandler I saw, Jones. Everybody and saw Crosby. They were butchering at the end. Yeah, they were. I mean, I don't know if you was saw. Was trying the broadcast. to get jiggy out there, man. No, I haven't seen the broadcast. <laughs> but Josh McDaniels at halftime literally said their entire game plan essentially was to stop you. I'm not making that up. He said we're just trying to con- contain Kelsey. That was their main emphasis, and you saw it all night. They were butching you with the DN, putting you in double coverage. But that doesn't negate from the fact that you can't only have 25 yards receiving and four touchdowns. Yeah, it's a it's it's a I record find by the way. A way to keep it is a record. It's a record. Man. I've found myself on the fucking tail end of some some pretty boo boo records, yeah. man. Yeah. You're you're was... the guy. You're the guy in the class project that doesn't show up the entire time, and then just shows up. <laughs> On what do you guys need me to do? do what do you guys need me to do? I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. You want me to say a joke? I can get a plus, everybody. A plus. Good job, group. Group effort. The other thing I had a problem with is after the game, you said those touchdowns are for you, mom. Okay. First of all, it was for mom's birthday. Mom's birthday was on the ninth, not the tenth. So you're a day late with your touchdowns. Okay. And second of all. Who are? You, why do you think you can buy mom's love with touchdowns? That is insulting to mom. You can't buy mom's love with touchdowns. I'm slowly, I'm slowly. I'm like, mom, I can't give you kids quite yet, but I can give you touchdowns. <laughs> mom is. A, How's four of them? How's four of them sound, mom? <laughs> do you love me? <laughs> Please say she you do. She probably does. No, she was she was in attendance. She loved it. She said thank you when I saw her in the suite afterwards. So, of course she loved it. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to keep popping out grandkids to compete with four touchdown games. <laughs> All right, Kai, let's get to work. All right, <laughs> big thing with the game. Also, the a lot of the two point conversions analytics coming into Ooh. play. 
as they are such a hot topic right now uh, in the NFL, really across sports. Math is uh, very popular in sports these days. Uh, what did you think of the two-point conversion attempts? Uh, how did that play in for you guys? How did it play in for the Raiders? We saw how it backfired for the Raiders. Yeah, I I think in a situation that we were in up one, you have to go for two there. You have to give yourself a chance to to go up three because two be, going up two doesn't that doesn't mean anything, right? So yeah, yours is a no brainer. You no make brainer. it a two score game. Yeah, that's exactly. not a question. It's the one that the Raiders did. That's the question because clearly they did that because the analytics say this is the right decision to go for in that moment. I'm I think it was the right decision. I just thought the play was. Yeah, it, that's my thing. So here's inside what I think. Zone? Well, what a- inside zone is actually, analytically speaking, they went with two analytics. Because I think inside zone is analytically one of the higher Josh, chances of a two-point Josh conversion. is doing his math. I know. McDaniel's analytics king. I think context matters. If it's a play that they felt really good about, I think it's a no-brainer. You 100%, go for two. 100%. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think a lot of people realize, and I think analytics kind of gets lost. Like, there's – there's the analytics, which is the percentage chance that it's going to be, what, increase your chance of winning the game, right? Which is what you're making these decisions for. Or the percentage chance you're going to convert this fourth down and how that affects your outcome of the game probability, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think when you are going into a game, just for our listeners out there, most teams go into a game with one to two plays – that you feel good about in our game plan for a two minute situation or I'm sorry, two point, two point play, yeah. two point conversion situation. Right. Mm. And if you feel really good about that play and you already haven't run it, cause sometimes that play is also just a tight red zone. Play Inside well. five. Yeah. Yeah. So I think in that situation, you see what the analytics say, and then you also have to take into effect the, the context of how effective the red zone offense has been all day, where you're at in the game in, in terms of what, what the feeling is like on the sidelines and the team, and then also how confident you as the coach feel in the play that you've game planned for all week. Because yeah. there's some weeks where you get that play and you're like, this is a no-brainer. We are rocking this. We're, it is going in. And there's we're some running weeks where you're it like, the first, yeah. Yeah, you uh, know what I mean? So I think all those kind of need to factor into these – decisions what i did think was interesting was how that decision then affected your guys decision because if it's 30 to 30 they kick the extra point you guys are coming out two minute offense let's go score some lions yeah you kind know, of in maybe the, on the same minute. tempo guys, that we've you, been having success with yeah it wasn't really it's not two minute but you guys are in a much different mindset now all of a sudden you're up one it's four it's minutes like, it's four yeah, minutes now you're, we, you're we're in, trying to slowly waste the clock and this is another reason I like going for two in that situation because if you go for two, you're winning, which is a best case scenario. If you don't go for two, personally, I would rather have the Chiefs offense in four minute mode than Pat Mahomes full throttle with the ball in his hand to go win the game. You know what I mean? I I think because Pat is one of the best operators late in games to finish a game out. I would rather them be like, hey, the best. let's be conservative, let's run the ball, let's conserve some I think it was a great call by Josh. Um just didn't work yeah, out. I thought it was the I thought it was the right call, just about just didn't execute, man. Just didn't right. execute. Shout out to the Kansas City Chiefs, baby. Woo! Ended up uh winning this the game. What do you keep like one of those balls, one of the four touchdown passes you caught? No. As like a trophy? Damn, I probably should have. Maybe I should You go didn't to... think about that? No. You, do you remember when you gave me your uh, Bilk Bowl helmet? On the field? <laughs> yes. Cincinnati so, told me that I could not. Uh, I I had to pay all of my parking tickets to get to get yeah to well just to graduate. And they said if you didn't graduate, you didn't get the helmet. So it was like a double whammy. I was like, yeah. I'm somehow going to take this helmet home. And I saw you in the stands after we won. I was I told- like, take it, run. Don't give it to anyone. Like it was like oh, just oh, like they were gonna come and hawk you, hawk you down for the helmet. They probably would have. They were stingy about that stuff. But the <laughs> the uh, situation, folks. Travis got a game winning touchdown his senior year in college at the Belk Bowl. The Belk Bowl, uh, baby. Yeah, it, and he gave me the helmet 
because of all the people he trusted in that stadium, he was like, my big brother will make sure that this helmet does not leave his hands. And I was like, Trav, I got you. I got you. I, I, and then we went I to the bar. The, I go then we went to the bar after the game. I get and to the I bar. Let everyone wear the helmet in the bar. <laughs> And that thing was gone in 30 seconds. I don't know what happened to it. I walked into the bar and yeah. some random person has my helmet on. How do I know it's my helmet? Because it has 18 right here on the side. And that was my yeah. number in college. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Some random, some random girl was rocking it, drinking a, a cold one, man. It was, uh, it was yeah. pure comedy. I went up to Jason and asked, what? What happened to my helmet? He's like, it's in here somewhere. Somebody's got it on. A... We, uh, we never saw Sorry it after that, that night. Yeah, it was a cool helmet too. Uh, it was not it one was. of my finer uh, Big Brother moments. <laughs> Sorry, right, big guy. Good story. Real quick, before we get to more new heights, we need to talk a little bit about upside. Inflation has us all thinking about less, whether it's dining out less, uh, you know, driving less. But uh, let's be honest, there's nothing fun about less. Now, thanks to Upside, you don't have to cut back. Get cash back on gas, groceries, and dining out with Upside. Personally, call me crazy, but I love saving money, and Upside allows you to do that, and it's so easy to use. To get started, download the free Upside app in the App Store or Google Play. Use our promo code New Heights and get five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more. Just claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside and pay as usual with a credit or debit card and get paid. You can earn three times more cash back with Upside. And then cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or e-gift card. Again, use our promo code New Heights and get five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more with Upside. Before we move on, you guys know we say a lot of stuff on this show that we probably should uh, keep private, but oversharing is how we became the number one sports podcast in the world, baby. But there is one place we absolutely want to make sure our privacy is being protected, and that's online. That's why when I'm at home looking at film or going through the playbook, I never go online without using ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your ISP can't see the sites you visit. Because we don't know what team our service provider roots for, but with ExpressVPN, it doesn't matter. And we know our info isn't getting shared. Most of the time, I don't even realize I have ExpressVPN on. It runs seamlessly in the background. All you have to do is tap one button and boom, you're protected. ExpressVPN is available on all of your devices, so there's no excuse for you to not be using it. Protect your online activity today with VPN rated number one by Business Insider. Visit our exclusive link at expressvpn.com slash new heights. And you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash new heights. Expressvpn.com slash new heights to learn more. Moving on. Eagles 20, Cardinals 17. The Eagles are still unbeaten. The only yep. ones left, the last of the Mohicans, man. Before we jump to the game, though, how you feeling, bud? I saw you uh, got a little banged up. The yeah. ankle feeling yeah. good? I would say it's feeling okay. Uh, got a nice little rolled ankle in the game. Ooh, uh, nice. I think um, I tend to be dramatic sometimes. No. And I thought it hurt a lot worse. And uh, when I got up, I was like, oh, okay, this is not as serious as I thought it was. <laughs> but at that, point, they already the said, game, though, at that point, they had already said, hey, we're going to get an x-ray on it. I'm like, okay, let's go get an x-ray. And then they're like, yeah, your ankle's fine. And uh, taped it up and went back out there. So, That's a boy uh, way to get back out there, man. Some guys don't nice, go back out. Some guys don't go back out. But fearless leaders always go back out, man. I got I'm a nice on. low low ankle grade two sprain. Luckily, I've torn it. Low ankle? So you rolled it, you rolled it out? Yeah. Man, I've been there numerous times. I actually had to get surgery on my ankle because I was just out there like a limp. Like it was like, yeah, it was. I was so just. That's kind of the way my left one is now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's the surgery and they can get it done. I haven't rolled my ankle. I'm fine. I'm just gonna spat since. it. They, they said they I'm said. Just gonna the good spat thing it. Is, that doesn't help. Spatting and ankle taping, ankle braces only make the ankles weaker, Jason. 
Yeah, I know they make him weaker, but it's already weak. So I don't have the choice of making it strong without getting this surgery you're speaking of. So what I'm going to do for the season is just spat it. Anyways, the ankle, I've torn that ligament so many times that they said, uh, you're not going to, it won't swell up anymore. No, so and that's, it actually dude, feels probably, pretty need, good. You need yeah. the deltoid reconstruction surgery, which I had, because I yeah. literally would have the most aggressive, like, Twist. ankle yeah. touching the ground. Yeah. Side of yeah. my foot is laying flat on the ground as if it yeah. were the bottom of my foot. And yeah. I'm just like, that was not good. Oh, my gosh. And then yeah. 10 minutes later, I got nothing. <laughs> we got weak ankles. We got weak – Kelsey boys got weak ankles. No, nah, man, I got strong ankles, baby. I got strong ankles. Well, that's because you had it surgically reconstructed. Yeah, after – That doesn't count. 20, it's a strong ankle. After 20 years of playing sports and rolling my ankle on the basketball court and on the field. Needless to say – I've been through ankle, a lot. A lot of wear and tear on these ankles. Not weak. Just had to, you know, get a little tight and a little screw it up. A little retune up. Yep. There yeah, I've uh, – The uh, – Hurts when I get out of bed, but actually after that it kind of loosens up and – Feel pretty good, so just got to yeah. get the blood flow going, man. But back to the back to the game, man. Five and zero. Oh, Kyler Murray had that uh the short slide or the uh, the slide that ended up being short of the first down. Yeah. Um, man, you just hope that you know everybody's just a little bit more unaware of where the the line is or where the the first down mark is. Um, obviously you got another play still, but yeah, if you can get a first down, guarantee a first down right there. I mean. Big time, big time play if you can move the chains. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously if he goes just a little bit further, uh, gets the first down, they can either get the ball a little bit closer for the kicker who ended up missing the kick, or they mm. have an opportunity to take a couple shots in the end zone to potentially win the game. So, yeah, not the best heads-up play from Kyler. Not the reason they lost the game, but when you're running full speed and putting together – they put together a hell of a two-minute drive. So, yeah. I don't want to – you know, the guy was pretty dang good on that drive. Yeah. Outside of that. So. Who else who who also played pretty dang good was Zach Ertz. Oh man, Ertzy. Our one of our favorites of all time, man. You guys do the jersey swap or uh, no? I think er, no, he didn't want to swap with me. He said Fletch was texting him earlier in the week. Fletcher is like He's pretty good low, at it. Yeah, he's he's like texting these guys. I'm like, dude, what are you like? You texting the enemy? Him? Yeah. What are we what doing? Are you doing? We're about to play a game and you're like conversing with this fellow? You're gonna have to tackle him in fellow. less than a week. <laughs> this fellow. Hey, buddy, can I get your jersey? I'm going to murder you this game. Remember, hey, remember, I want that jersey right afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't that's talk how, about it before the game. That's how Fletch plays, too. Fletch ain't, it doesn't matter who's in front of him. Fletch is going to, oh, yeah. he's just going to be the Trust beast Trust me, I've, I've been across from him every day <laughs> in practice. He does not care who you are. He doesn't. Um, Got to love that. But, yeah, no, it was awesome to see my man Zach. Uh, him and Julie just had their first child, baby boy. Name, Madden. So Ooh, I know. That's a good one. That's a nice little football name, isn't it? It is. That guy's destined to be in the NFL. Destined. You already know. Has yeah. something to do with this NFL league for sure. Shout out to Little Madden, man. Yeah, baby. Dicker the kicker. Came up big. Game winning kick. Man. You want to talk about a guy destined to be a kicker? If your last name is Dicker. No, no, no. We have the butt kicker. Harrison Buttker. Bucker. Yeah, it's not as good as Dicker. Let's be honest. What? We got Travis Harrison, the butt kicker. Are you kidding me? He kicks ass. We need him back, but he kicks ass. That doesn't have to be just kicking, though. Like you could, you could make that with like anything the guy does. What does, what does Dicker have to do with kicking? It rhymes and it fits perfectly. What are you talking about? It's, it's it fits perfectly. Yeah. The only other thing that guy could have been is maybe a porn star. That's the only way that name fits in. We're either a porn star or a kicker. <laughs> like You got two options here. Yeah. Mr. Dicker. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's a good one. 17 final play drive. Wait, what is yeah. this? 17, 17 plays. Of the final yeah. we, play had a, we had a nice little four-minute drive that started with, I think, like nine minutes left on the clock or something like that in the fourth quarter. Something we had a big old drive. Seventeen play drive? Yep. Yeah. Man. I was just talking yeah. about how I was tired after a ten and eleven play drive scoring touchdown, man. That uh seventeen, man. But we took our time. That we is weren't gassed. doing we took our time. We weren't little doing two no minute, huddle. Little two minute in there, little No, we got it down. We were inside two minutes once we got 
into the like tight red. And uh, about the only bad thing from that drive is we weren't able to finish it off inside the five on third down. We didn't get the touchdown out of it, so we had to. That's where Dicker the kicker came in, and um, you know I think uh, that drive would have been perfect, like the ultimate fourth quarter drive if we would have been able to finish her off in the end zone. No, I hear you. Uh, and it's one of those where you know they went with a zero blitz. You know we knew it was coming and just didn't execute. Uh, so. You know, that's when it's frustrating when you know, when you know what's coming and you feel it coming and you still don't get it done. That's a, that's a frustrating feeling for an offense. So although we're really happy with that drive, I think I speak for the entire offense that we wish we would have been able to finish it off in the end zone. No, you already know. You never want to put it in the uh, kicker's hands, but Dicker came up big. Do the Eagles run the most fun run scheme for linemen? It's up there. Is it the... Is it the pin and pull, which is the the best to watch on everything. film when we watch you just actually just take a drop <laughs> step and just start hauling tail at, yeah. at linebackers and DBs out on the numbers? Yep. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, it's not just the pin and pull, but obviously Jalen Hurts and the quarterback he is enables all these reads. You have the RPO version of it. One minute you're reading an end. The next me- minute you're reading a linebacker or an edge player, safety, uh, force player. Um, I think, you know, it's so multiple. You know, we can do gap schemes, zone schemes, uh, pin and pull schemes, draw schemes, screens. Uh, And we have an offensive line that is built on athleticism and size. So, you know, I think uh, the Eagles definitely value uh, those type of linemen uh, to be able to do that multiplicity of scheme. Um, Is it the best? Or most fun? I don't know. I certainly enjoy it. Um, I think Baltimore Ravens have a really fun run game to watch, obviously. I mean, whenever you have a quarterback that's that <clears throat> dynamic, it's going to just increase uh, the options you can attack a defense with Yeah, in the run game. So, um, you know it. And shout out to, shout out to Ertz for having, or Hertz for having the mental capacity you know what i mean because a lot of guys yeah don't have the ability to put it all together be able to run yeah, it's all these various you know what i mean yeah and it's uh, these it takes, kills it, all these checks and they're baiting it's not just based on you know coverage and secondary we have checks based on a lot of different things um and um for him to be able to handle all of that uh i think that speaks volumes of jalen hurts you know it man speaking of jalen hurts Still, the official podcast of the QB Sneak. That's right. That's the only touchdown we had in the game, both of them. Uh, quarterback sneaks. Sirianni told uh, Pat McAfee on the Pat McAfee show last week that he hadn't listened to our show, New Heights, but the play calling says otherwise. Have Do we have a, a full-on count on how many times you guys ran QB Sneak last game? Uh... I don't I don't know. I know we ran it three times in a row <laughs> from the three yard line. We were fourth and one on the three. Ran quarterback sneak, got a yard. Got it. We're first and goal on the two, ran quarterback sneak, got a yard. Got it. All of a sudden, second and goal on the one. What do you think we're running? QB sneak. <laughs> um, I gotta say, as much as I love quarterback sneaks, uh. dude, it's getting hard. They know it's coming. It's not a quarterback sneak anymore. It's not a quarterback sneak. Hey, we're gonna be we're sneaky. Not sneaky. There's nothing sneaky we're not about sneaking this. Anything. We're all in four point stances. As a matter of fact, we know that you know it's coming, so we're actually gonna put a guy behind the quarterback to, to push, push him. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we're just gonna all out just get as much mass moving as we can. I mean, dude, it's carnage. I had to get evaluated for a concussion because I was at the bottom of seven hundred pounds of man dude, lying on top of me. It can More get a little that. uncomfortable. It can get dude, a little uncomfortable down there. It's it's getting hard. I'm not gonna lie. But Gotta low go man's analytics. Win. Low, low analytics. Man wins. <laughs> well, low man wins or the uh, the most amount of mass pushing wins. I mean, it's it was a they were some brutal uh, QB sneaks, and I, I loved every second of it. Um, but yeah, man, it's it's a lot like pounding salt up a fat lady's ass right now, trying to get that thing in the end zone. Uh, not easy. Tough sledding. Rob McElhenney. 
We love yeah. Rob. He uh, he shouted out uh, the QB sneak on Twitter. He said, "I'm I'm so happy that the first NFL coach in the history figured out you could get one yard every single time with the same play, and that ha- that coach happens to be the Eagles." I don't know if Mac listens to the show. Mac, I hope you listen. I love that uh, your uh, profile on pick on Twitter is actually just me. It's fat, <laughs> it's fat Mac, but me and Fat Mac, I think, might be the same person, actually. Is the Jason Kelsey goal line play ready to go? Sirianni also told Pat McAfee on the McAfee Show. He wants to get I, yeah. you involved in something on the goal line other than a QB sneak. I can neither confirm uh, nor deny. Uh, I will give no insight into the inner workings of our operations. I will say, though, if I somehow do get in the end zone, uh, you better be ready for fat and or sexy Batman, however you want to perceive it. Uh, He's coming out. Come on, Sirianni, man. Give the people what they want, baby. Let's dial that son of a buck up, man. Um, The record for all-time QB sneaks is Brady with 157. Jalen is off to a hot start. Uh, do you think he'll ever get to that many? Uh, I don't know. That's a lot of QB 157. Yeah. That means, I mean, you got to do was multiple damn good at a game. Too. No, no. It was, uh, that was, I feel like he had the freedom to just, if it was third and he one. He had the or, feel for it. Yeah. yeah. Just, hey, goose it. Um, you know, I don't know. I think uh, I'd be curious to know how many Jalen and I have run so far. I think we probably are averaging – Close to thirty a year, I'd bet. What? So two I think and a half so. a game? Almost. Maybe I'm way off. Listen, don't quote me. I have no idea how many we're running. I know we're running a lot, and if Jalen yes. plays as long as Tom does, he'll definitely clear one fifty seven. You guys are averaging two two sneaks a game. That's pretty. It's close. That's, yeah. It's at yeah. least we're definitely averaging one a game. I'd bet over the last couple of years. I hope he, uh, if he does catch him, he only catches him getting successful QB sneaks. Um, hey. You know what I mean? I think we've only missed we've missed two since Jalen's been in there. Do you count the QB sneak on first down? You're talking That's what, about I don't first, know what does that so does that go think, into the success category so I, or because you gained a yard or Yeah, I think I'd be curious to know what the efficiency rating on that is cuz clearly if you call it on first down you want to score on it. You don't want one yard, right? But if it gets you one yard closer to just do it again on second down. I mean, I have no idea. So the Eagles fans made it a home game. Officially uh, out there in Arizona, they showed up, as they always do, everywhere they go. You guys always have a have a big crowd. I remember when uh, you guys played at Arrowhead, you guys definitely were, were there. You know what I mean? You could hear in the stands when uh, whenever you guys made a big play. But um, do you always yeah. notice the amount of Philly fans, or is it kind of just second nature to you now? You're just like, yeah, every stadium we go in, we got a we got a bunch of fans showing up. No, well, I mean, it's different levels of it. Um, we've played a lot of away games that have kind of been like home games. Uh, certainly, it happens like almost every time we play in L.A. Um, it's it's happened in Florida before, but you know, I yes, the Eagles fans travel extremely well. Not just that, there's just like. When you deal with – when you're playing a team that's kind of like a transplant city, meaning the major, like a lot of the people that live in those cities have roots that trace back to like the East Coast, right? So like a lot of the L.A. residents uh, grew up or have family members or dads or moms that grew up on the East Coast. So there's mm-hmm. just a lot of Eagles fans out in L.A. that are dying to go to games. And yeah. then on top of that, I think Philadelphia fans are always looking for that – that game on the schedule that they can travel to. And it seems like Arizona this year was a hot was ticket item. Yeah. They traveled well. Um, and when you're playing in the dome and dang near half the stadium is Eagles fans, uh, it's going to be loud. And uh, they made it a difficult situation for Kyler and Arizona's offense to communicate. Um, and that's a huge advantage for us. I think I read an article one time a couple years ago where I think they voted Eagles fans. I don't know how they calculated it, but they said Eagles fans were the best traveling fans in the NFL. Yeah, or whatever that's worth. I don't. I don't. Nah, I'm not buying that one. Maybe a few years. You're not ago buying it before. Who, who's before number one the besides Chiefs. the Eagles? The Chiefs. Come on, dude. Right. You hear it 
You're Every such a homer. Single... You're such a homer. What do you mean? You just pumped up your freaking eagles for traveling. What do you mean? You're a homer. I didn't, listen, and you just made I, up some I, bogus ass fucking journal or what, uh, whatever I'm story. I'm making it up. All right. You this know guy what? came out right of now. nowhere. Yeah. Right, I'll, I'll I can't wait it. to hear which right here. Philadelphia beat writer it was that said that. The Chiefs fan base is everywhere, and you can see him in the bright red, loud and proud during the national anthem. Yeah, and then when we make big time plays, it is. I love love the kingdom, and I might be a little like our division has been bouncing around. Once the San Diego Chargers, then then they go to Los Angeles Chargers. Not a lot of Chargers fans in L.A. Exactly. Right. So Chiefs fans are going to just absolutely own that one. The kingdom, same thing with Oakland. When we were playing in Oakland, we showed up, but now that it's in Vegas, it is literally a 50-50 deal. Um, you'll see black and red even at their at, at their home games. Um, I just feel like the Chiefs are everywhere, and, it, and it's more so, and it's more since Mahomes has got there than it was in the past. But I just feel like every single game that I play in, I feel the Kansas City crowd. And yeah, I might I mean, just be biased to that, though. No, you're not biased. I mean, your guys' home field advantage is incredible. Arrowhead is one of the loudest. It's the loudest stadium in the NFL. The loudest. So, I mean, I think. 142 um, decibels. Yeah, who's counting? But, you know, I think. Uh, we are. <laughs> <laughs> there's no question the Chiefs have a loyal fan base. Nobody's saying that. I'm no, just saying, no. based on a random article I read, they're not the best traveling. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Ten years ago, the article came out when you were, what, in your fifth year in the league? Hold on. Listen, I'll find it. Google. I'm Googling it right now. You want to go to the next topic? I'll find it on Google. <clears throat> that was a solid plug for Google right there. Oh, yeah. I'm binging it. <laughs> Is Bing still a thing? I don't even I think don't that's think a thing so. anymore. I don't think so, man. I'm ask Jeevesing it. Jeeves is going to tell me. Jeeves is still up and running. It's not. Is it? That's not one of the. Yeah. I, My I internet so. butler. My internet butler is still kicking, is still still going strong. Full disclosure, this article is on NBC Sports Philadelphia, but I think it's pretty, I mean, I think this pretty much settles the debate. What? You just, I'm, I'm over this, man. It's Chiefs referencing. Fans, it's, the kingdom it's, knows we show up the best, It's man. referencing a study that was conducted by Dr. Michael Lewis of Emory University. Yeah. Emory's East sounds, Coast. Uh, sounds pretty authentic to me. Yeah. He... We were, oh, we rank second in road equity. I don't know what that means. Uh, I guess the Dallas Cowboys are the only ones above us. Yeah, we already know about the Cowboys, man. Let's get into uh, some uh, NFL storylines. NFL London games. We had a pretty fun one to watch. Yeah, the Giants upset the Packers in a second weekend of the NFL games out in London. How many have, have you played in more than one over there? Just one. Just you one played game. One? We played the Jags played in, in, in 2018. I, I know you played in one because I was at that game. Yeah, that it's was one of the few cool. games I was able to go to during the regular season. I remember jumping on a train with you out there in London and going to get a steak that was the size of like a quarter. I love the London games. It's a love blast. Them. Um, Such a unique up. experience, man. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot that goes into it, and you know, obviously, it's a it's a hard game to play with everything going on, but both teams Why? are in the same. Well, I just think, you know, you're, you're uprooting, you're practicing in different areas, but it's not, I mean, both teams are in the same situation. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. I, I don't think I, it's like, an, it, to me, it's worth it. I like the mix up. Uh, it was awesome to play in Wembley stadium. Awesome. To say I did it. The field was atrocious, but <laughs> it was raining a lot and uh, it was super muddy, but it was a, it was a blast. Loved every second of it. Um, and I think that's one of the cooler things that the NFL does is some of these uh, games overseas, whether it's in London, uh, whether it's with our neighbors in the South in Mexico. Uh, you guys are supposed to play in Germany this year. Germany, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bucks I canceled, uh, right? The Bucks decided they wanted to play us in their stadium uh, since it was a Buccaneers home game. Um, yeah, well, always, uh, always next year. You know what I mean? I think well, yeah, uh, I think guys... we did get the bid for next year for Germany. So yeah. keep, keep my fingers crossed, man. So the fan base is – it is a different environment. <laughs> what it's a, it's just an all-star game. That's all yeah. it is. You see jerseys from every team. 
Yep. You know, it's just people going up there supporting their favorite player. Um, and they cheer for everything. Every good play they cheer for. It doesn't matter if it's a defensive breakup. It doesn't matter if it's a you know a field goal for either team, a uh, touchdown for either team. They're um they're getting fired. They're getting fired up for just like a successful play. It kind of makes or, you feel like it's like uh like little league baseball. Like we're just <laughs> cheering for all the good stuff. Might not even keep score. We're just having fun out here, <laughs> giving you guys a show. Enjoy. Oh man, that's it was it was a blast. It was an absolute blast playing in in Wembley, like you said. Um, we played the uh, the Detroit Lions, as you remember. You were there. Yeah, it was yep. um it was a fun one, man. We uh we smoked them. Yep. Uh, Alex Smith had a hell of a day. Um, yeah. and uh, it was cool to just like, obviously traveling in the off season is fun, but getting to do that in the in the middle of the season was kind of like a uh, like a like a fresh start, you know what I mean? Like it kind of yeah. like to break the routine of exactly. being in Kansas City. It was a, it was kind of refreshing for me, and I I enjoyed it. I we also didn't leave until Thursday night. That is, we got there Friday oh, really? morning. Yeah, we got there Friday morning. Oh. Practice Friday morning, and then uh, Saturday. Obviously, we were uh, we're in the hotel and everything. Yeah, I think the day left. before the game. I think we were there for five days or something. We were there for almost the whole week. So you guys got to actually see the city. I mean, I didn't really do much. I uh, didn't. I think it's, I don't know, you're kind of focused on the game while you're there. You, you see a little bit. Um, I got to see the city a lot when I was there watching your game. Got to ride yeah. on the tube. Got to, you know, see Big Ben, all that all that jazz, Abbey Road. All uh, right now. A little, uh, yeah. It's I got to cool. see none of that. So I'm uh, looking forward to maybe going playing in London again. Well, you guys are playing in Germany next year, so don't look forward to London. Look forward Munich. to Germany. Munich. And I will, if I can, I am definitely going to that game. I've wanted to go to Germany for a long time. That would be pretty cool. <clears throat> I think uh, I think I might be up for another record. The most, most receiving most, touchdowns in the most countries to score a receiving touchdown. I don't know if anybody's countries? done. Yeah. I've, so so far, Mexico, I got three. London. What's the, what's the third one besides Mexico and uh, in the, the UK? The one we is play he, all of our games in. What? Oh, okay. <clears throat> so I this would we were be only the fourth. Counting. Got it. All right. This would be the fourth if I get yep. one in Germany. All right. I don't know if any, I don't know if there have been players that have had the opportunity to play in four different countries. Probably not, but you know we'll count it. You know, records right. are records, right? Matt Rule yeah. out of Carolina, man. How you about never that? you never like to see guys get fired in the middle of the season, man. That is a tough situation to be in not only as a as a coach still on the team but a player you know yeah. it, it, the organization is just that is a quite a dagger especially this early in the season and only being five games from your experience what is the what is the situation like I mean I've I haven't had too many coaching changes all my coaching changes have been because the coaches are doing such a great job here that they get hired somewhere else obviously yeah. being under Andy Reid yeah, Doug Peterson who went to you guys and then uh, Matt Nagy who went up to Chicago um, I haven't really had too much turnover. I, I've seen it on the right. defensive side, but in terms of offensive, I, I don't have much for you. Yeah, you've had that same head coach your entire NFL career. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, this is a different situation. I've never lost a coach five games into the season. That's a that's I really – imagine that. Uh, not common, obviously. So they must not be happy with what's going on up in Carolina – or down in Carolina. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, you know, whenever you – have a coaching change there's a period of uh of unknown for the players and everybody that's still there like what's going to happen Man. who's going to stay who's going to go is everybody gone what's the new coach going to be like what's, what's the new the system going to be like yeah. yeah and um you know you you start from square, ground one you start from ground zero uh you start installing plays installing terminology um you know it's it all uh, it takes a while to build all of that back up in the team. So ideally you're not going through too many of these transitions. Cause I do think that some of it can start to affect the locker room and whatnot, especially this, I mean, five games into a season, I, what's this locker room going to be like for the next 12 weeks? And That's they fired the defensive place. coordinator too, I think. So, you know, who knows what these guys are going to be running <laughs> offense and defense as a player. Can you tell when a, when a head coach is, uh, is probably going to be out of there? Is there like a feeling? Uh, sometimes of the you can. Sometimes you can't. I think um, in our situations, I feel like it's 
never been like ultra clear, you know, even when they were moving on from Andy, when they were moving on from Chip, it definitely it blindsided some people because we had had two 10 win seasons before that. So I think people were surprised at his first losing season that he was fired. And then Doug, uh, that one was kind of a last minute decision too, it seemed like. So I don't think you, you see it coming. Obviously, you know that the season hasn't gone well and um, there's going to be some changes. I mean, it's a, it's a lot trying to uh, transition to a new coach and it's a lot really, it tests the leadership of the, of, of the locker room. Uh, you know, you, you need the older guys to be able to buy in and be open-minded to the new regime coming in. It tests the coach right away and how well he can get guys to buy into him. Um, and we've been fortunate to have a lot of good coaches come through Philadelphia. Back to the coaching change, though, I think that the biggest thing is, you know, you know, you, you, you lock, the locker room can be a finicky environment, you know. There's a reason finicky? I think. Okay, sorry. The locker room can uh, – is very malleable. <laughs> this guy's killing it, man. You're just. You're I'm not trying to. I'm trying to choose the correct words. You just, you just want to make me feel stupid, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I think, um, you know, the lock, the locker room is, you know, it, I'm trying to think of the right word, and I'm, the, your vocabulary is hindering me. All right. Anyways, the uh, what I'm getting at is you – when you have coaches and organizations that have been through coaches every three years, they're getting draft picks high all the time. So they clearly have talented players on those teams. So what is going wrong with some of these organizations that can't find a way to get it right? You know, I think when you play a lot of meaningless games or you make decisions early in seasons that kind of like, in my opinion, a little bit like devalue the current season that's going on, I think that's dangerous to do to a locker room. I really do. I think that you run the risk. It sends of, the wrong message, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you're as an organization trying to preach that, you know, we're a family, every game counts, like all this stuff. And then, you know, I don't know what, maybe that's not the environment Carolina. Maybe it's not. Me, yeah. I don't know, man. I think uh, guys tend to see the business side of it very quickly. And, um, that that can make guys I don't know act a little more selfishly, make them you know do things for their personal benefits yeah. instead of the team because they see the team's direction. You know that's yeah, uh, they they just fired the imagine. head coach in week five. You know what what am I? <laughs> What's these what are these guys, man? This is, so I don't know. Maybe it doesn't do that. Everybody's I just think, heads on a swizzle, swivel, man. Yeah, I don't know. That's only a, time a, only time I've had a crazy coaching change like that was when uh, BK left. Brian Kelly left us in uh, college. Yeah. Um, which was crazy because we played arguably the best team in the country with, uh, with like our lung snappers dad having headphones on the sideline, yeah. <laughs> trying to organize yeah. everybody. It's yeah, and Jeff, Jeff was the head coach. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it, and and listen, those guys I think did the best they could, but it's just a different environment when you don't have a head coach. It's just yeah. when people don't know what is coming next, people are automatically going to wonder like, what is going here i need to look really good because i don't know where i'm going to be at next year you just deal you're dealing with a lot more self-interest in situations like this that i don't know is conducive for one of the biggest team sports that there is yeah. probably the biggest massive quarterback extensions we're going to talk about it nick wright tweeted three quarterbacks sign massive extensions this offseason big money Russ Russell Wilson, two hundred and forty-five million. Damn. Aaron Rodgers, two hundred million. Kyler Murray, two hundred and thirty million through five Damn. weeks. Through five weeks, um, you know, I don't think any of those guys are performing where we thought we they would. Whoa. Aaron clearly is lacking some major talent on the Green Bay roster, um, but you know, I think. Uh, what do you think of these contract extensions? Do you think that guys are looked at unfairly? Because of these contract extensions, if you're getting paid that kind of money, you're you're not only just one of the best players in the league. You have to be able to elevate the guys around you. So, I don't necessarily yeah. think that you know saying that guys the the talent level around you know great players make other pe people around them better. It is what it is. I've seen Pat Mahomes make me look ten times better than than what I look like or than what I am. But let's be honest. Let's be honest. 
It's only five weeks into the season. Check this out. I remember last year, people were saying Aaron Rodgers is done. He ain't doing very well. MVP. He went out to win the MVP. MVP. Four weeks into the season, people are completely ready. Like, Aaron Rodgers ain't got it no more. Come on now. Come on now. Aaron Rodgers don't got it no more? Aaron Rodgers. Come on You talk about AR-12. What? And I'm not ready to catch it. I'm not ready to ready to cast like like say Russell Russell Wilson. Come on now, he's been one of the best. I mean, listen. And that defense is gonna that whenever, defense is gonna whenever, keep them in a lot of games. Yeah. And Russell's gonna have a lot of opportunities. He's gonna have this time to figure to this thing out. Yes. And and the bottom line is, I think when when you sign a massive extension, one yes, you're gonna be under a spotlight more when you're at when when so much money is being allocated to you, which also means you're a premier player at a premier position you're going to get that criticism and you're going to be judged harder. Yeah. Um, but I also think in general, people are very quick to judge. Um, let's let the next 12 weeks sort out before we yeah. uh, say, how about, these how about the out. guy that didn't sign the big time contract, this massive extension and is betting on himself right now, Lamar Jackson. Oh yeah. That is a fun one to watch right there. I love, I love it when guys bet on, each, on, on, on themselves, man, like an Aaron judge, <laughs> Don't don't just fold or take whatever they're willing to give you. Bet on yourself to go out there and get the bag the next year. I mean, it's just uh, I mean, it depends. I don't know fun what to he's... watch, man. But it's uh, I love seeing them have success, knowing what happened in the off season, man. Yeah, I don't know. What, did, did they, have they released what he was offered? I have no idea. But no, no, Lamar's and and, been... and it's an interesting situation because he doesn't have an agent. He's got his, yeah. I believe, mother and uh, the NFLPA helping him out. Sure. Um, so it's an interesting dynamic over there. One that I've definitely never heard of. Um, one of the best quarterbacks, uh, MVP in the in the National Football League, not having an agent to negotiate, kind of doing it all himself with his mom. You know, that's uh, – and betting on himself on top of that to yeah. go out and get a bigger bag than what was offered or, or you know. It's just uh, I'm happy for the guy to see him have success this early, man, that's for sure. He's got my guy well, Mark Andrews over there balling. Yeah. Um. Yeah, always a fan when guys bet on themselves. I'm just a fan of Lamar Jackson. I mean, yep. dude, dude's an unbelievable player. Uh, seems, seems like, like an a unbelievable great teammate. Team. Yeah, I mean, dude, he seems like a, I mean, he is like a prototypical guy. I think every NFL guy roots for. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm glad he's playing so well through these first few weeks, and hopefully that just continues. One hundred percent, man. The other thing with quarterback extensions, man, that's a lot of money to tie up in one position, man. It's hard to allocate money to receivers and everybody else. The way you have to do it once you have a quarterback that signs a big extension is you have to draft really well. That's what it comes down to. You have to have young you talent, get, yeah. You have to get young talent that is on rookie to third-year contracts, which are mm-hmm. low-paying and not big salary cap hits. That has to be the bulk of the playmakers on your roster. So if you're going to sign a quarterback to a big extension, you better be ready to draft well. Actually, you probably should have already been drafting well. And I think that's why the Chiefs have done so well. They, they've just – I mean, you guys have killed it in the draft, 100%. Uh, whether it's offense or defense. Um, and, you know, that's what the model has to be once you yeah. start to pay a guy that much money. Shout out to Brett so. Veach. Let's go, baby. The Veach. All right. We're on to Ron Rivera criticizing his own quarterback. What are we doing, man? Come on, coach. Rivera was asked, why do you think the teams in the division are further ahead at this point? He answered, quarterback. Such a bad take, man. A lot of respect for him too, but you can't you can't say this, especially you know considering where his defense is ranked. Yeah, considering that you're the head coach of this team, you cannot just point at one position, one guy, and say that's the reason. And I think he realized it. He issued an apology. He said he actually talked to Carson this morning. In fact, I talked to the whole team. I already said it. Already said it. Doesn't matter. What? He already said it. Oh, you're saying and the apology he was, doesn't work? You, no, that shit doesn't fucking mean anything. Yeah. As a well, player, I, as a player, as, as a player, you could accept that apology. When he said it, he said it like it had been on his heart and his mind for a while now. Yeah, I don't know. It's tough. Uh, you know, I think, obviously, you never want to. I just don't think it's ever a good idea to pin it all on one person, especially In when you're team, not playing. Like yes, yeah, when you're not. Listen, when you're not executing and, and, and winning games, it's never just one guy. That's the reality of it. Yeah. So maybe, you know, everybody needs to do a better job. And when you're pinning it on one person, I mean, that's hard. That's, that's 
you know, I, it's it's unfair in my opinion. Um, that ain't right. So, yeah. In the words of I, Chris Tuck or Chris I, Rock. I think you. I mean, it seems like Coach Rivera realized that he did issue the apology. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a tough one. Um, yeah. What's it like? I don't know. I don't even know how to answer that question. I've never gotten public criticism from a head coach. Um, um no, I've never. I've only just got the the coach Reed eye. He like stares at you a certain way, and you feel like you just got <laughs> criticized, and you better tighten yeah, I've up. I've certainly got internal criticism uh, from coaches, and I hope everybody's getting internal criticism. I love, from I love some good coaching, baby. Some good yeah. aggressive coaching. Coach me up, um, baby. Coach me up, yeah. Travis. You suck. I'll yeah. do better, coach. I got you. I, unless it's something egregious, I just don't know that. You know, you, that needs to happen on on a public uh, platform. In contrast, Mike Tomlin on the Steelers struggles. We were a disaster in all three phases, and we have to own that, starting with myself and what I do. That's the that's the, what you want to hear from the coach. And that's what you want to hear from a leader. 1,000%. Like, listen, even, even if it's true, even if the quarterback is the reason, we'll address that internally, right? We got game to play. We got a team to keep together. We got to get better in all facets. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah. No, I'm with you, man. Great I'm job, Mike. You. And that, that, yeah, Mike is a great coach. He's obviously been in Pittsburgh for that long of a time. Um, I couldn't even tell you how long. It feels like my entire life since Bill Cower left, and uh, yeah. he's been absolutely killing it there, man. And guys say they love to play for him. New Heights stamp of the week. Who do you got? You want I me got, to go first? You got it. I'll go first, man. All right, my guy Geno Smith. And, Gino. Uh, Gino's been around just as long as I have. We've been in the same draft class. This has got to be his best career year so far, at least his start to a season. Um, last week alone, 16 for 25, 258 yards and three TDs. Uh, the veteran quarterback. Um, I'm very fortunate, man. I've, I've, I've seen Gino sling it around since uh, we were in high school, man. He doesn't even know this. I guarantee he doesn't know this, but – um, when he, when we both went on a uh, recruiting visit to, uh, West Virginia and he was back, there was like a seven on seven, uh, showcase almost. And he was just dotting it. And the way the ball was coming out, his hand was like, it was just, <laughs> Tom, like, uh, you were, you were at a recruitment camp, one of the recruiting camps with Gino at West Virginia, at West Virginia. And oh my as a quarterback, as a quarterback, and I thought I was going to go there and Rich Rod was going to offer me a scholarship because of what he saw in that seven-on-seven seven of me. And right. I walked out of there empty-handed, and Geno Smith <laughs> walked out of there with an offer to West Virginia um, and later on uh, accepted that offer and had a heck of a career in, uh, at West V. Um, but I just remember <laughs> seeing him throw the ball, and I was, I was just sitting on the sideline like, man, I ain't got that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I could throw it a little bit, but I ain't that ball ain't flying out of my hand like that, man. And um, well, it looks like you still out, got it. He is balling out this it. year. Still yeah. got it. Way to take Playing your great. game to new heights, baby, over there in <laughs> Seattle. Shout out to Geno, man. I'm gonna go with Jarek McKinnon. Nice. I got to, man. You know, another I just, veteran. I know. I love when somebody sparks something because you guys are flat, man. And I really think that that's a. It, it was a play that I think a lot of people. It will go unnoticed, but man, that was something that I really think like really got some energy going when you guys needed it most down 17, nothing in the second quarter. Um, I love seeing a guy, especially a running back, something about like the refusal to go down, trucking people, running through tackles. Um, Let's go. Let's keep doing that. Let's keep doing that. No, I feel you, man. I remember the feeling after that play was finally like, God, finally we're we're rolling, man. Let's go. Let's keep that yeah. momentum. Let's go. He so only Jack had eight definitely. rushes. Only had eight rushes for fifty three yards. Um, you know, you know, Clyde Edward Tolaire obviously gets the bulk of that duty. Clyde with you guys, Clyde, baby. he's an unbelievable back. But man, I really thought I thought Jarrett came up big and was a really a uh, crucial moment in the game where you guys needed to get something done before halftime there. So Jetty, Jet's big, I'm man. Going He's man. big time. All right. Let's look ahead to week six. You guys, big time rivalry. It's turning into, we got bills at the chiefs. What do we yeah. think? Both um, you guys four and one, obviously probably the most exciting game from last year's just in general, but playoffs, anything, 
I mean, that playoff game was incredible at Arrowhead. Uh, what are you thinking? I'm thinking it's going to be another one of those kind of games, man. Anytime you put Josh Allen and Pat Mahomes on the same field together, it's going to be exciting to watch. Um, in terms of the rivalry, I mean, I I think uh, since the Mahomes and Allen, Josh Allen era has begun, uh, we've played them in two, at least two playoff games in Arrowhead that have gone, you know, pretty big games. Obviously, the one last year going down to the wire. Uh, but last year, it, during the season, they absolutely, I don't want to say whooped us, but they, I mean, they got the better of us for sure uh, during the season last year. So um, I'm obviously expecting them to be fired up to play considering what happened last year and, I, and definitely uh, how their team is rolling already this year. Um, and we're going to be in for another dogfight, man. It's going to be another four-quarter battle uh, all the way into the end, man. Their defense is solid uh, as it gets in the NFL, obviously adding Von Miller. Hate going up against that fucking guy, but fucking love him as a as a person, man. Great dude, but yeah. damn, that dude's good at football. Um, but it's just gonna be a it's gonna be another Chiefs Bills rocker, man. I can feel it already, man. Just gotta get this body back in tip top shape by Sunday and go out there and roll the balls out, baby. Let's go get it. Well, the last game you guys had against each other, Andy Reid, probably the quote of uh, of the playoffs last year. When it's grim. Be the Grim Reaper and go get it. So mm. hopefully you guys are the Grim Reaper uh, next week. You know it, baby. They call me the White Reaper. No, they don't. They don't. They do call you Big Yeti, though. Big Yeti. Big, Big Yeti. Yeti. You, guys, you guys haven't seen the Yeti come out here. You don't want to see the Yeti. When Trav was at Cincinnati, he would play uh, basketball in the in the playground quite a, quite a bit. It's right down the and, street from uh, my house. And anybody who's ever played Pick up basketball. You know their shirts and skins. Shirts and skins, dog. That's the only way to separate the teams. Shirts and, uh, and skins. Whenever I want skin. <laughs> big, I... Yeti. big Yeti's here to play. <laughs> I had the big beard. I had the long Dude, hair. I had the that chest be... hair, back hair, arm hair, leg hair. It was just a big Dude. old just Yeti out there, man. All, all the homies on the uh, on the court were calling me Big Yeti, especially because I was a big, I was a low post player, so I was just down there giving work. Handing Just out work it. in the post. The, the, you've got the Zeus nickname by, like, KC fans all over the place. <laughs> that the, it's all about Big Yeti to me. Big Yeti is the best nickname you've ever had. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, now, you guys, uh, Cowboys at the Eagles. The that's boys right. got to come to the link, man. Uh, is this the best rivalry in the NFL? Uh, is I this mean, it? I think so. You know, it's certainly um, the most uh, – history and ingrained rivalry uh the fan bases hate each other uh i think eagles fans honestly they care about how well we do uh but really all they care about is that we beat the cowboys so um this is a big one always for the eagle fan base that's a huge one that always has playoff implications involved and uh right now they only have one loss and uh it's a big game the nfc east right now who would have thought Man. NFC East, we have eagles five and oh cowboys four and one Giants four and one. Who would have? I mean, look going into the season, it was looking like it was going to be another weak year for the NFC East. Turns out to be maybe the best division of football. It's I up mean, there. It's definitely up there, man. You guys got some dogs over there. Um, so, I, this is a huge the, game. The Giants was was the biggest one for me. I kind of you would hope that the Cowboys. I mean, t- Cowboys have a lot of talent, obviously. Um, yeah. But the the Giants are the the one I did not see coming. Um, yeah. And happy for everybody over there. Obviously, Mike Kafka, our Mike guy, Kafka, our OC, OC over there, dialing it up, putting the points on the board. Man, it's uh, it's yeah. cool to see. Dayball's got him, got him rubbing. He's he's got him rolling pretty good up there. See, seeing a coach fired up after a win like that, did you see him running off the field it, out in London? I did not. You could tell oh, he's I saw the he's game invested, too. I don't man. That. He's invested, and he, you could tell he's probably pretty fun to play for, man. Good energy. Those guys are playing hard. Their defensive coordinator. Uh, Wink Martindale, uh, they're playing so good in a lot of different facets. But uh, yeah, we got the NFC East is is back to being, uh, you know, that division again. So yeah, we got everybody. our hands cut out. We're gonna have this is a big game right now for the Eagles, um, and this is a good test for us. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, and uh, everyone thought that uh, that AFC West was gonna be, you know, 
the, yeah, what big, happened? the biggest. I don't. I don't know what's happened to you know. It's we're, early. We're holding. It, we're, we're holding up our end of the bargain. Good. You know what I mean? Got a lot of football left. You know, a lot of football. Uh, does yeah? Which uh, which game deserves the the primetime slot more? You guys in the Bills or Eagles Chiefs or Eagles uh, uh Cowboys? Uh, well, I mean, you guys, you guys are five and zero, oh, so I can't say that you guys don't deserve to be on primetime football, you know? I mean, two, sure. two of the best records in football going at it. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But it's Josh Allen and Pat Mahomes. So, obviously, yeah, I mean, the people want to see another rematch of that playoff game. I think if it came down to it, which game should be on Sunday night, it'd be, it'd be the Chiefs-Bills game. But um, I'm not mad that you guys are, you know, getting a little – a little showtime love, man. Cowboys Eagles is bigger than players. That thing is like deep rooted into like culture and and history. Um, you know, I think that there's the, the game, that game is history? so much more. What are you talking about? Who? I mean, it's like the Cowboys were good in the past. You guys, like the Eagles, haven't been good really since. Well, they were they were well, good before the Super Bowl era. Andy Reid, Andy Reid was the one that kind of, at least from what I know. Well, you got you know you got uh, uh, oh my gosh, my brain doesn't work because no, it's it's working uh, just fine. You just can't find it because it's not there. <laughs> Even before Andy Reid, you got a uh, Dick Vermeil that was in, in like just uh, inducted oh, into the yeah. Pro Football Hall Shout of Fame. Out to I got uh, man. I, did I ever tell you that Vermeil story? So uh, we're, you, we're we got a, we're in did. the Super Bowl. We're yeah. going to the Super Bowl. We're having our first week's practice in Kansas City, and um, we're fortunate to have Vermeil come back. He was obviously also a coach in Kansas City for a while. Um, good friends with Coach Reed um, yep. and Vermeil. Um, he's he's been out of coaching for a while now. Gets in front of a group, and you can just tell he's getting those coaching like juices going. Like the like being in front of the the guys and um, telling a few stories, telling how uh, saying how the game's kind of getting soft. Like yeah, you guys just got to bring the physicality back, man. And it starts with you guys, you guys up front, and you know uh, where's Kelsey at? I stand up, man. I'm excited. He's getting me off. I'm like right here, coach. I stand up. He's like, your brother is one of the best football players I've ever seen. I was like, <laughs> yeah, he is. And sat my ass right back down, man. I thought he was going to show me, like, give me there some we go, type coach. of love. I, was like, I love him too, man. He's the best. <laughs> like, love you funny. too, dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shout out to yeah, Big I mean, Neil, man. Great guy. You know, I mean, you know, Coach Vermeil, Buddy Ryan – Listen, there's a lot of history in both of these organizations, but I think it, yeah. it comes down to a lot more than that, man. Like, the Eagles are, like, an intense fan base that's so localized to, like, the Philadelphia area. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's it, it's it becomes, like, almost from the moment you're born part of growing birds, up man. in this area. Prime time Sunday night football, baby. Can't wait to tune in, man. Well, that about wraps up the sixth episode of New Heights. Woo! New Heights happens every Wednesday during the season. Watch and subscribe on YouTube to the New Heights channel. And uh, listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, New Heights is a Jukes original presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. Follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show for fun clips throughout the week. And uh, thanks to our production crew. Week in, week out. You Seriously, guys make guys, it fun and make it you. easy on us, man. Nobody really knows how absolutely terrible we are at this. You guys make us look great. So thank you. We love you guys. And adios.